What's good? This is me, and I'm, I ain't gonna say I'm back because it's the first time that I'm doing this. But I finally figured out how I can get my gameplay and how I can react over it all in one. So this is a Madden gameplay. This is my first ever gameplay on my channel. If you guys don't know that, I want to be a um, gaming channel, a um, music channel, a reactive channel, all that in one. But there's gonna be mainly gaming uploads. So this is the first one that we got. So as you can see from the picture here, I will be playing Ultimate Team today. And so as you can see from the coins and my overall, I'm an 89 overall and no, I do not spend money on this game. I am no money spent. I don't spend no money. I don't buy no packs. I don't buy no coins. I don't do none of that. As you can see, I have 250 thousand coins i'm a 61 month overall i'm an 89 overall we're gonna go ahead and get into the defensive lineup so for defense we got dion the goat we got dion legerius sneed denzel ward and then byron jones and antonio samuel or well, asante samuel they're just backups for the kims that i get because i got i got lockdown and go deep kims basically the more people like you see how this person is in blue you see how denzel ward is blue and Justin simmons is blue and dion is blue it's because their chems that I activated on them, which is locked down, I get plus two or plus three or plus four like different attributes. Like Dion, he is like a um his stock um zone coverage is like a 90, 92, 93. But with plus four zone, because I have all my chems, with plus four um lockdown, I have like 96, 97 zone and like 93 minutes. So basically all the people that's in blue, their attributes are going up. Then for safety, I got Mika Fitzpatrick and Justin Simmons, who do freaking great for me. Users, like the people that I'm going to use, are Isaiah Simmons and Taylor Mays. If you want to play Mutt, you need to have Taylor Mays and Isaiah Simmons user or Ronnie Lott. Them two are the glitchiest players in the game, hands down. Those two are the glitchiest players in the game, hands down. If you don't have them, you're like using yourself to a disadvantage. Now, for my pass versus, I have Joey Bosa and uh Chandler jones and sometimes i sub in lori glover or deforest buckner oh for the uh, abilities i got acrobat on um all my corners except for legeria sneed and i got um i got acrobat on dion denzel ward and i got uh what is it double or nothing i got two double or nothings on uh, joey bosa and um Chandler jones so i can get the block shed animation now on my playbooks i have Panthers offense because I run Gun Bunch, which is the best offense in the game, other than Trips Tight End. But I got Gun Bunch and 3-4. Uh, now, for the offensive side, I got Brett Favre, Alvin Kamara, Keenan Allen, Ter Terry McLaurin, Tyron Calico. They don't see the field. The only people that see the field is Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, and Tyreek Hill. And for my tight end, I have Jer 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 Michael Finley. God. And then this is my offensive line. Now, for the same thing on defense, I have go deep. So now, Tyreek Hill is 91 overall, but I boost him up to 92 because of the Kims. And Brett Fall was a 93 overall, but I boost him up to 95 because of the Kims. Now, with the Kims that I have, Brett Fall gets plus four throw power. Um, Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, and uh, Tyreek Hill get plus four um, deep route running and spectacular catch. And uh, beat, plus three beat press. So, if you don't have Kims and Mutt, that's an easy way to boost your attributes up to where you don't have to have the best players in the game. You can have some of the good players and still be dominant, like I'm showing this gameplay. Yeah, the abilities on the um, offensive side are, um, I got Gunslinger. If you pass the ball a lot, you need Gunslinger. You absolutely need it. If you don't, you're at a huge disadvantage. I got Gunslinger, Running Back Apprentice for uh, Alpha Commerce, you can get the other routes. I got uh, Tight End Apprentice. Edge protectors because I don't have a good offensive line. I have budget players and I often go against 93, 94 overall, so I gotta have them. Then I got um Slotomatic on um Keenan Allen so he can run quick routes on the inside. But other than that, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay, baby. Let's get it. But we're finna go ahead and get into the gameplay, man. This is my first ever walkthrough that I'm gonna do. Um I wanna do more like live gameplay and I will the more I um the more I get used to this stuff. So yeah. As you see, that's my starting lineup, 95, 94, 93, and then Rich 4L Keith. Now, let's look at his lineup. He has Night Train Lane with Triple Lockdown and Double Sprinter. Chad Johnson with Route Tech and Outside Apprentice with Triple, I think that's Go Deep and Sprinter, and maxed out Tyreek Hill with, I think that's Double Me and um, 
route tech with double with double go deep and sprinter. So this dude plays the game a lot. He probably spends the money on it. He probably has like a 93 overall team compared to my 89. So I'm just going to show you guys that you don't have to have a 99 overall team to be good at this game. I'm going to show you right now. All right, so we come out on kickoff. We um we always sky kick because we don't want to kick at the Marquise Brown if we kick it to him, but he has Julio as well, so it's tough. So we come out on kickoff, we try to lay the hit, we get all, and we come. First thing on defense, you have to set your audibles. You have to make sure that you um, do your adjustments, your coaching adjustments. Now, I don't know what office he's coming out in, but I automatically set my curl flats at 20. Why? Because your curl flats on 20 will help you out so much. That covers all the cor deep corners, the crossing routes that you get beat on. 20 automatically sets it right there. So automatically do your coaching adjustments. Always put the always put your option defense on conservative because a lot of people like to run with their quarterback. They don't like to hand the ball off. So put it on conservative. Then my ball in the air, I always put uh, play ball. That's what I always do. So I see he comes out in a strong close, so that lets me know he wants to run the ball. So I do my audibles. I make sure everybody's in the right spot. As you can see, I'm subbing in my players, making sure everything is set up. I go to 335 wide is the best run defense in the game. So I crash down, I shut my D-line to the left, and I spot my safeties. First play of the game, my user gets sniped. I don't know what happened to him, but he just fell. But luckily, we got good defense, and we come down and we make the tackle. Now, another thing on being good at Madden, you got you don't call your play before the offense calls your play, because you don't know what they're coming out of. If you would've came out on trips like that, I would've had to change my lineup. So now, he comes out, same thing again. I, I spot my safeties, I slide my line to the right, but he runs, he passes the ball, actually. Now. Whenever he does that, I'm like, oh man, he got a big route on me. Well, let's go back and analyze it. Let's see what we did wrong here. All right, so I'm thinking that he's gonna run. So he comes out, boom. As you can see, my assignment is the running back, but I'm turning away from the running back. Why? Because I know this play. A good, a, a main thing about being a very good Madden player is you have to have IQ and know what plays are. If you don't know what the plays are, you're not gonna be good at all. So. This is like PA deep cross or something like that in strong close. I mean, in I form. So I know that the Chad Ochocinco right here, I know that he is going on the crossing route and Tyreek Hill is going on the post route. So I try to get back and guard the post route and I can't get there fast enough. So it's okay. We're just going to adjust. I shouldn't have put my uh, safeties in the spies. I was trying to stop the run. But watch how we adjust. You have to be good at adjusting. Madden is all about adjusting how the other person plays. So. I don't spot my safeties this time and watch how better recover it. Watch how better. Comes out and runs the same exact play. Now, I don't spot my safeties. My safeties are in deep blues. Now, another thing about, like I said, being a good at man, you gotta know how to adjust. I know from adjusting that that deep blue is gonna take away that post route. So I don't need to use it that post route. So I need a user that cross on route because it's unguardable and he has route tech on Chad Johnson, which is possibly the best receiver in the game so I have to get over there which I do I get there but now I mess up on oh my user oh my gosh my user was so good and I messed it up let's go back and analyze it all right so what I did wrong I did everything right but what happened the running back went on a Texas route if you don't know what a Texas route is it comes up it's like a little angle route and it comes up like that and it beats man every single time so I used it the crossing route I try to jump down on the Texas route and I do I have so much IQ in this game that I know the Texas route stops on the numbers. Look what he's doing. He's getting ready to stop right now. But he throws the ball with an outside pass lead, which makes him do a little stop and go animation, which gives him the ball on the sideline, which is crazy. It's so crazy. But we're going to go and jump into the next play. So he comes down the eye close again. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to spot my safeties because I know that's what he wants to do. So I'm reading the run. If he runs the ball, it's going to come down. And boom, we make a good hit. We don't have to spar our safeties every time to play the run. We got good linebackers. That's why we sub in Sam Mills. Now, Sam Mills, let's play it. Sam Mills is not a good uh, rushing linebacker, but I know he's good at defending the uh, pass. Or he's good at defending the run. Now, right here, he wants the same play, but he mixes it up this time. This time, now this is when I say, you have to be smart. You have to know what's going on. Now, let's go back. Now. On this play, he runs a different play this time. He's not running that same PA cross route. This time, his middle receiver, his tight end goes on a dig route, and Chad Johnson is going on a post route. So I'm jumping for the post. You see me running for the post, but I forgot. Chandler Jones has to have good um, coverage skills. Now watch how we adjust to that route. 
Now, this is why I talk about adjusting. We take our curl flats and we put them on 10 yards because we want them to guard the slants. We don't want the slants to be wide open. So now we know we don't have to guard the slants. Now we just know we got to guard the middle. Now watch this. I see him going on the post route. I run to it and I jump it and I get the pick with Taylor Mays. This is what I tell you guys. You have to have good IQ. You have to know what's going on in the game. Now, on offense, first thing you want to do is set your audibles. You want to make sure everybody's in the right spot. You want to call, get your right place set up so you can make sure that everything is beat. I put double post, flood, mesh post, and um, PA dig for it because those are the four main plays that I call throughout the game. So I'm going to have all four of those plays because all four of those plays can be any coverage in the game. So I need to make sure that I can be ready to adjust and switch plays and audible whenever I need to. Now, he pauses the game. I think he's going to quit, but he doesn't, so we're going to get right back into it. Now, first play on offense, I'm reading his safety. That's a good thing as a matter player. I always want to read his safety. So I see he's a man. I run double post. That post route by Tyreek Hill gets open 99% of the time. 99% of the time, that post route is going to get wide. Well, that little... It's like a little deep angle route, but it's a post route, but it gets open 99% of the time. So the very next play on offense, I see he's in man again, so I don't want to give him the same look. So what I'm going to do is put a slant on the field with Keenan Allen. I put a slant, I buy my running back, and I motion him over. So he has to pick one. He has to go out the slant or the post. He jumps out on the slant. We throw the post. It's a hollow read. On our own offense, you want to give your, you want to confuse their user. I know it was man, so I put two man beating routes on the field to so make him pick one. And now that I know he's in, now look, now look, he has two high safeties, and one of his two, both of his corners are backed up. So I know it's either cover four or cover two. We're just gonna read the safeties post snap, then we're gonna adjust to how he, what the uh, play calling is on defense. So I flip the play to see if he's still in that same look. He's in the same look, so we know it's cover four or cover two. We read the safeties, and it's in a cover three, so we throw the flat real quick. Flats is always wide open in cover three, always wide open, unless they do hard flats. Oh, it was actually a couple four palms. Another thing as well. Read the recent play. Read the previous play, and it will tell you a lot of things about how your opponent wants to play. Now, I see he comes out of cover four palms, and I have a coverage bomb out of cover four palms. So I go straight to it. If you put um, Tyree Kill and your tight end on a streak route, that kills cover four palms, and you're going to see it right now. You see, outside pass lead. Kills cover four palms every single time. You just have to know, you have to laugh and be very experienced, and you have to figure out what what route combinations mess up their defense. And whenever you figure that out, you'll be a good batter player on offense. You gotta make the defensive player think, you gotta make them do adjustments. If you got you gotta adjust to how they're playing. It's a chess match. It's not checkers, it's chess. Alright, so now we're back on defense, and now we're just gonna call the same thing. We're not gonna be we're not going to do too much or anything, guys. We're just going to make sure that we're stopping this run and stopping that deep post route. We come out, slot our line to the left. Boom. Same thing every single time. So now we know we don't have to spy our safeties. So we can keep our safeties in deep blue so they can play the pass better. Now it's the second quarter. I'm going to come out, do the same adjustment, slide my line to the right because that's strong side. If I didn't say that, I'm sorry. So I always slide your line to the strong side and then slide, slide up. I mean, um, slant inside. But on that play, um, I think he ran the same play. I tried to, uh, he did a good job on adjusting by putting his running back on a hook route. So I have to guard one. I had to pick one and I picked wrong. Now we're going to go to the same thing. Look, 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 look. We're getting real adjusty. And now look, he has a bomb, but he hits him, but we hit the hit stick with Justin Simmons. Now we're going to go back real quick. Now, as you can see, my routes, my um, defenders do a good job on jamming him up. Look at Sam Mills playing good. If that's Bradley Chubb, he's burnt. Now, well, he's still burnt. But now, as a good user, as a good mana player, you want to use one route and then jump to the other one. But he does a good job on offense by sticking onto this because I'm taking away this route. That route right here is not open. This is not open. But he looks, and so I'm like, okay, he's not going to throw this route no more because he thinks it's not open. This route is breaking open, so let's jump on this route. I jump on that route, and he throws it right where I just came from. And he throws a dot because I don't even think I would get there. That's a dot. But luckily, we have Justin Simmons. He comes down, and he gets a good hit stick, and he pops the ball out. Thank God. So now we're coming out on defense. We're doing the same exact thing, but this time we do a blitz. We're going to try to blitz him, see if we can get back there faster. We do a blitz, and it doesn't work. But luckily, thank God, I don't know what happened. He clicked on, and he tried to um, do a little move with his user before he caught it. But he misses the catch. Thank God. Because he probably would have had a touchdown. Now we come back. We're like, nah. We're not going to do that no more. So we come out of the cover. So we're going to send a little bit of heat. Out of Big Nickel over G. 
We're gonna switch it up a little bit. We gotta give him something different. We send the heat. He has something open, but the just blitz is just too quick. That's why we have Legereus Sneed in the game because he has like 93, 94 speed. Sending him off the edge, you're never gonna have enough time. You have to throw a quick dot. You have to throw a quick route, and he wasn't expecting the blitz. You gotta mix it up a little. Now we're coming back in that same defense, but this time we're gonna bluff it. If you don't know what bluffing is, it's like we're not gonna we're gonna do the same look, but not do it. But watch what I do right here. I'll call a timeout. Why did I call a timeout? Can you guess? Because my curl flats, my zone drops was not on far enough. I had him on 10. He has to go 18 yards. If he throws a corner route, my curl flats is going to go 10 yards, and I had a purple on the field. If I would have did that, he would have had a free first down. That's just IQ. You have to have good IQ. I have to know what's going on, what situation it is. So I changed my curl flats to 25. Well, I changed him to 30 because I don't want him to get no deep pass on me. I changed him to 30, and I put my uh, cloud flats on 10. We're going to play a little bit of defense here. So I don't want him to get this first down. It's fourth and 18. We're going to lock up right here, play a little bit of zone. We're going to bluff him again. He's probably going to think we're going to send the heat. We drop back. We play coverage. We got good defense on the field. He gets a dime, but luckily we get back there and we punch the ball out. That's just good defense. He was expecting the blitz. That's why he blocked the extra person, but we didn't blitz him. We bluffed him. That's the good part about this. It's chess. It's not checkers. It's chess. We come back on our offense, and now it's looking like that same cover four, so we're going to go back to the cover four bomb. We flip the play, make sure it's the same. If his, This is the thing about flipping the play. If his players would have moved, if one of those safeties would have moved, he would have been in a different coverage. They didn't move, so I know he's in cover for a bomb once again. And guess what? He's going to get hit with another bomb. He's got to learn his lesson. Outside pass lead, touch pass, bullet pass, whatever. It's going to be open every single time. I promise you. Do not run cover for a match against me. I will bomb it every single time. It's not a good defense. Unless you're adjusting out of it, it's not a good defense because I will bomb it every single time. And now we're back on defense. And now, one thing on defense, you never want to call stock coverage. Unless it's man-to-man, -man, stock coverage is not a good play to play. So now we're coming out. We're probably going to send the heat. Once again, we're blitzing everybody. We're going to see if we get there in time. He bigs up the blitz. Luckily, we have a little bit of good coverage, and he throws a dot, but luckily, he misses again. I don't know what's going on, but luckily, he, he misses. But we see that we didn't have our zone drop set up right. So we go back, we change our zone drops. That was our fault. That was our mistake. Now we're going to come out. We're going to put him in a Ziploc bag now. So now he comes out. We know he's not running the ball for real, for real no more. So we don't got to play man no more. We come out. We don't see no pressure. And we get another pick. This dude has a blind user. We celebrate on him. We let him know that we're really here. We're really locked in. Do a little stop and go. A little sticky icky. We get the touch. Down. If y'all want a video explaining how to do a stop and go, I will explain. But we gotta rewind this so we can analyze it. So we call cover two again. We send a little bit of heat off the edge with Lazarius Sneed. It gets picked up. But I don't know why, but everything was user. Every everything with a good user, everything can be taken away with the slightest little bit. Now we use her both in the middle route, inside routes. We know we have everything outside covered. We just gotta use it inside. There's nowhere to throw this ball. You can throw it to the flat. You can throw right now because we're gonna get broken up. He thinks that's open right now. But we have one of the best edges in the game. We come down to make that pick. That's why you get Kims. Without without Kims, he doesn't have, I'll probably say he doesn't have above 83, 85 zone. With Kims, he has like 89, 90 zone. 90 zone makes that play. 85 zone does not make that play. That's why you have to have Kims on your team, and it's very important. We're back on defense. We got him in the box. It's 21 zeros right before the two minute warning. We just want to play some more defense. He comes back out in strong clothes. We're coming back out in the man to man because we don't want to keep giving him the same exact look. So we come out in man to man now. We mix it up. I don't know what happened right there. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he meant to do that. I don't know if that's what he wanted to do. But he comes out, he quick snaps me before I can get adjusted. He throws it to Darren Waller, and now my players are tired. I about give up a touchdown, but luckily we didn't because we keep fighting. We don't stop. We don't give up an inch on defense. So now my players are tired on defense. We're just going to sit here and make a play. We come out in the same thing. We're going to guard it. So now we put a hook curl right there just in case he tries to do the same exact thing. He motions over Tyreek Hill. We put him in a deep blue. We back up the defense. He gets a good corner out dot on the outside. I don't know how Tyreek Hill held on to that. But he did that was a good um corner out dot now we're on the one yard line and i have to do better at this i don't have good goal line defense but luckily i don't know what happened here but we locked up 
because that's what we do best. If y'all know me, y'all know I like to play defense. I love offense, but I like to get adjusted to the own defense. So we come here, boom, quarterback sneak, that's not going to work. Quarterback sneak is not the move this year. It's mainly fullback dive, power, and toss. If you're not running a fullback dive, power, or toss, then you're, you're lost. So we come here. We get the stop again. I thought we wasn't going to get the block shed, but Lori Glover comes in and gets the block shed. I don't know how, but we got it. Now he comes back out in strong close, and I'm on goal line. I'm in big nickel. I'm thinking he's going to run. I'm like, maybe he's going to run so I can just shoot the gap. Uh, No, I think he passes it. And he passes it on the goal line. He has nothing open. He has nothing open. He has nothing open. We send this We send this dude, and we knew that was going to be a user pick, and he would have threw that ball before he got sacked. That would have been a user pick. Now it's fourth and goal. It's time for us to stand up. He would, I, in this situation, I would take the three. Well, no, I would actually go for it because it's two minutes. It's a minute and 13 seconds left before halftime. I get ball halftime. He comes out and gun tray flex. I'm like, okay. We're going to send the pressure out, and we're going to put the pressure on him. We're going to see if we can get back to the quarterback. We get the pressure, and he runs read option, and we get there, and we get the stop that we needed on the goal line. And then I think he goes on, and he quits out the game. I, th I think he quits. I don't think I run another play. I think he quits out. Yeah, he quits out the game. So, without further ado, you guys, that was a great gameplay. Shout out to, um, what's his name? Richie. Shout out to Rich for L. Keith. Shout out to him. But um, if y'all want more videos like this where explaining where I'm, uh, what I'm thinking in the game, how I'm playing, or how to get better with a low overall team, I got y'all. I'm the king of the budget, guys. I'm the king of the budget squad. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to hold it down for the budget squad gang. But without further ado, it's your boy Noah JTV. And always remember to be like no other. Without further ado, we gone.